What's up everyone, Alex here. In this video, I want to talk about my impressions of Samurai Warriors 5 after playing for 10 hours. Which might sound like a short time, but it feels like a lot for me. And that's actually a very good thing. I want to thank Koi Tecmo for providing this PS4 game code. But before I start talking about the game, I want to set the record straight. Between Dynasty Warriors, Samurai Warriors, and Warriors Orochi, counting the other Warriors games Omega Force has made for other companies, including the spin-offs of all the aforementioned games, there are more than 50 games of this type. So if you're expecting me to break down which features are new to this game, or what gameplay elements have improved, I'm gonna tell you now that that's probably not gonna happen. Which is all to say that I'm actually treating Samurai Warriors 5 as its own deal. I also want to set the expectation that the reason why this specific impressions video is coming out is because a review is probably not going to happen for a very good reason. If you frequent the channel's community tab, I'm pretty sure you've seen that one particular post asking players what games they play to relax. And I guess to my surprise, so many of you actually said the Warrior series, which also happens to be one of my go-to games to relax. Ultimately, this is all to say that I'm probably just going to tell you how much I loved my experience with Samurai Warriors 5, and if that's okay with you, then you're going to enjoy what I have to talk about in this video. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, post a comment, then subscribe to the channel to let me know that you've loved what you've seen here. All that said, let's start talking about this game. So if you're expecting me to tell you that there's so many different new things to Samurai Warriors 5's gameplay that make it feel fresh and revitalize the genre, I'm going to stop you right there. You're going to be pressing the square button a lot, on occasion maybe pressing the triangle button, or maybe just pressing the triangle button a lot. But of course, change that to whatever your preferred platform is. This is all to say that this is a Muso game through and through, and that has not changed. However, for me, one of my favorite things about Samurai Warriors 5's gameplay is actually the gap closers. Gap closers are a way for you to bridge the gap, so to speak, between one group of enemies to another. How many times have you played a Muso game where there's just clumps of enemies and there's just like this blank space in between them, and all you want to do is to pretty much mash the button and kill all the soldiers? Gap closers, specifically the triangle button, is a great way to kind of just dash forward and continue your combos. And to me, that's actually one of my favorite aspects of the gameplay here. Now, there's also what you call an ultimate skill, which is interestingly enough, you can set on a per character basis, which allows you to really customize the different abilities that your character has. One ultimate skill actually allows you to do the same thing, which is dash forward, but also kind of suck in all these like soldiers around you so that that way you have even more characters to kill. And this is all to say that that's actually one thing that I really love about this game is that it really has tools to kind of keep you in the action at all times. I also really love how you could just hold the L2 button and have your horse just run towards you and your character will just jump on. And that actually does a lot for the pace of the game. Just even looking at that animation and what it does and what makes you feel. It also helps that the game has a really solid frame rate on the PS4. Another thing that I really like about the game is that the weapons aren't locked behind certain characters. And I actually really like this because it allows you to play with your favorite character with a different set of attacks. And mind you, there's not hundreds of different weapon styles and whatnot, but I really liked the ability to mix and match different styles. There's also this really cool system where you can actually dismantle weapons and kind of take some of the attributes and put them into other weapons with empty slots. And I really enjoyed just messing around with that and trying to make like the most overpowered weapon that I can put into my characters. And one thing that I really appreciate about how the equipment system works in this game is that everybody can use the same mount, the same weapons, and it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So you don't have to worry about like making multiples of the same item and having to equip it for different people. And that saved me a lot of time. And to be quite honest, of the 10 hours that I played in this game, I spent a considerable amount of time trying to make the best weapons that I want. And that was just a fun and intuitive experience. As far as character selection goes, I tended to gravitate towards Nobunaga Oda and No, and I think having the game start you off with Nobunaga Oda was actually a stroke of brilliance because it showed you the potential of this game. They introduced you to pretty much how all the gameplay features work, including the gap closers and whatnot, and going through Muso mode with him kind of allowed you to get into the spirit of what Samurai Warriors is all about. I'm going to talk about more about the Muso mode later. 
No, on the other hand, I was reluctant in playing at first because I was like, oh, she has a bow. She's probably going to be really difficult to play, right? But as it turns out, she was actually super fun to play. And despite her having to use a bow and arrow, she can still do the gap closers that I mentioned earlier. In fact, everybody has that ability with a triangle button. Overall, I really do love the characters that they have in this game, and they're actually quite memorable, thanks to the story. Speaking of, I know I haven't finished the game yet, but I have to talk about this because this is really the first time that I played through a Samurai Warriors story. The story of the game is pretty simple. It's recounting the tale of Nobunaga Oda's rise to power in Japan, while peppering stories from folklore and mythology that kind of really make this historical retelling feel larger than life, so to speak. And I kind of appreciated that because it's made me curious about what really happened and in a way made me really engaged with the characters and their plights. Now, this is not like an award-winning tale. I'm going to set your expectations right there because I don't know about you, but I don't play Koi Tecmo Warriors games for the story. But what they had there is enough for me to be engaged. And it really kept me going from beginning to almost to the end, I suppose. <laughs> Speaking of story, the Muso mode is where you're going to play to find the story. And eventually, it'll actually unlock different branching paths featuring one or multiple playable characters. Once you complete a battle, it will unlock a free mode for that specific battle, which will actually let you play with any character for that specific scenario. I think this is great if you want to level up other characters, but most of these battles tend to go above 10 minutes, upwards of about 20, even up to an hour, because that's kind of like the timer that they give you. What if you don't have that much time on your hands? Eventually, going through Muso mode, you're going to unlock Citadel mode, which is a fantastic alternative. Simply put, it's kind of like a tower defense game where you have to defend one or two points with your characters. You just have to fulfill different requirements and defeat waves and waves of enemies. But it only lasts for five minutes. So if you're pressed for time and you just kind of want to play a round or two of Samurai Warriors 5, this is a great mode to do it in. To help manage the waves of enemies, you'll also be able to call upon the help of troops of different types from time to time. You can't summon them all the time, but you can kind of go to different parts of the map, just kind of drop a whole bunch of them and then keep moving. To me, the point of the mode is to be able to engage with the battles in a really quick way. And five minutes seems to be a really good chunk of time in order to engage in this sort of gameplay. Ultimately though, the reason why Samurai Warriors 5 has a lot more eyeballs on it is because of its brand new Sumie presentation. The last Koi Tecmo Warriors game that I played was the last Warriors Orochi that was released, and that was not a looker. And when I saw the art style for Samurai Warriors 5, I thought to myself, you know, with a new coat of paint, this might actually be enough to kind of revive interest in the series. And lo and behold, to me, that was enough. So seeing these characters rendered in this way kind of really made my experience with Samurai Warriors 5 feel fresh. I think what I also found surprising is the music. I have this memory that Warriors games have this like intense hard rock soundtrack, which is left over from the Warriors games that were released back in the PS2 era. So I found it really fascinating that in Samurai Warriors 5, that it actually has a balance of this modern sound mixed with period appropriate musical styles and instruments. And I actually really loved how it set the tone for the rest of my experience. It wasn't always this intense soundtrack that was kind of banging at you, making you want to press buttons a lot faster. There was actually more nuance. Again, that's not to say that the music is going to win awards and whatnot, but for the kind of game that Samurai Warriors 5 is, it really enhanced the entire experience. At the end of the day, Samurai Warriors 5 is a game that I will continue to come back to so that I can experience some of the best Musou gameplay out there. Granted, it's not as polished or as deep as other Warriors games out there, both from within Koi Tecmo and other companies, but it scratches a very specific itch, that desire to play a traditional Koi Tecmo style Warriors game. And between the three games that I mentioned that they publish, I think Samurai Warriors 5 is going to be satisfying for fans of the series, because I know I'm having fun with it. That being said, I am going to be curious what you think of the game once it finally comes out. Post your thoughts in the comments below once you've played the game. I want to know who your favorite characters are, what you think of Citadel mode, and what your favorite weapons are so I can try it out. And if you like this video, post a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And if you love the game so much that you want to talk to other members of the community about your experience with Samurai Warriors 5, 
Join our Discord at bit.ly slash our backlog battle. And if you really like this video and you love the community that we're building here, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash backlog battle. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.